Hello, everyone. This is Ellen Campbell with Campbell's Creations. Welcome, 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 welcome. Today, I'm just talking, chatting on how you can um, subscribe. Not subscribe, but you can subscribe. <laughs> Let me turn my volume down. I'm chatting and talking today on how you can design your quilts. I have a new quilt that I already hand based it. And I kind of base it like the way you can base it on a long arm machine with a machine, but I use my hand. I sew the edges down and I rub the slack out. Then I measure me a space about, I use about 15 inches to do mine. Every 15 or 16 inches or so, I go in and do a hand base from edge to edge, like cross to cross. And I just continued that process until I got through basing the whole quilt. Now I'm ready to quilt it up and I'm trying to figure out a design. Hi, Sandra K. She said, hi, Miss Ellen, stopping by to say hi. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, in the photograph I use for this, you plates I have here. I purchased these at one of the quilt shows I attended. And when you go to these quilt shows, they have some awesome rooms or you can go to some that have vendors on the floor that be selling used or secondhand stuff, you know, for quilters. And at this quilt show, they had a back room and I was able to get these. And these is only a few. Let me get my bag here. I have more, you know, the rulers I have. I have shared that with y'all. Sandra said, I will watch the replay for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, I have the triangles temp templates. And the reason I'm showing y'all these different templates is because you can use these to design your own quilt. Hi, Kathy. How you doing? Kathy Quilts and Crafts. How you doing? Hello, uh, So Terry. Let me see. She said, hi, Miss Ellen. Hugs to you. Thank you, so Terry. I'm showing these temper plates. I'm sorry, y'all. I had a tooth pulled, but I'm, I'm still going to share what I need to share because quilting is fun, and everybody that loves quilting will love to learn and know how you can quilt your quilts up on your own home domestic sewing machine. Because I know everybody don't have a long arm. And this is just some of the shapes I have. And you know, in some of these shapes, you take your mark and pen, which I showed y'all, you can get the heat erasable mark and pen or the water soluble mark and pen or the chalk. And you can take these temper plates and lay them out. You first create your grid on your quilt. And when I say a grid, it's sort of like the grafting paper, but it's on a larger scale. You pick out your blocks measurement. Say you want to do blocks, say a 12-inch blocks. You measure out your 12-inch blocks. You measure out your line, start at the top, draw a straight line all the way across using your yardstick, or you can use a uh, painter's tape. You can use um, a string or whatever you use to keep yourself straight. Go ahead and do that. Tape it on there if you have to tape it. Staple it on there if you have to staple it. But fix it where it's on the edge. And you once you get your measurements grafted out for the whole quilt, you go back and say, well, I'm going to create a star block design on this straight um, straight pattern quilt because I have this quilt I'm working on now is the um, Indiana Coats and it's all of a fabric quilt 
and I'm gonna use some chalk because it's blue and white, and I can't see dark colors too good eyesight. Okay. Um, I'm not perfect, but I love to share what I know how to do and what I learn how to do and probably been doing for years, but just hadn't shared. I take these designs and after I got my little chart grafted out, I lay them on the fabric and I take pins and you can take your time and trace around it to put this design on there. But you go ahead and draw out your star block. Get your star drawed out. And the way you label that star so you'll know what you're doing, you can use alphabets. You can call it A, B, C. Oh, excuse me. A, B, C, or whatever alphabet you want to use. And you can say, well, this going to be blue or this going to be white or whatever you're going to change the color to. Label all of them that way all over the quilt so you won't get anything confused. And once you got it labeled, you can make a note of that labeling so you can uh, have it on hands by the time you're ready. Now, in a, this is not a full triangle because this edge is cut off, but you can use it as a full triangle. And once you get it as a full triangle, you can go back and say, now, what kind of pattern I like to put into this? This is your stitches design. I have notification blocking. I'm sorry. Um, you go back and you take your markable utils of your choice, your tools of your choice, and you go back and say, well, I want to put some wish bones on this because it'll go up it'll expand it'll cover the whole area so you start off how you were gonna how you're gonna start your wishbone and you go down and turn you know you keep expanding you put it on some paper so you can uh test your design out keep drawing it and test it so when you get to the machine and you, when i quilted i quilt my quilts from edge to edge. It's still an edge to edge process. And as I go, as it go through the neck of my machine, I rolls it up. I don't put anything in the middle because if I add something in the middle, it's going to take up space that I can use to just roll up more fabric. And everybody know the clamshell, right? This is a beautiful, large clamshell to design. If anybody need a copy of this, contact me. Uh, you pay the shipping, I'll send it to you because I purchased this. <laughs> I purchased this and it's mine. And you can see it's been rolled on, used, everything. You can take this and make it your design tool. And the way you do it is once you get your grid laid out on your quilt, you might say, well, I have a star block here, so I'm going to skip a block and create a clamshell in the next block. So if you put the clamshell in the next block and you say, well, I'm going to go all over with that clamshell, you see it has stitch lines for quilting for if you're going to cut, cut it out and make a full piece quilt with it. And all you do is just lay it down on the facing of your quilt. If you need to use tape, go ahead and put you some tape on the back so it won't be moving on you. Lay it down and take your water-soluble pen and go all the way around. Once you get that one did, lift it up and move it over so the edge will touch the other edge and draw your next design. You keep lining it up like that. So, you know, in this area, you're going to have like a half circle. From the bottom, it'll be a half circle. So when you're designing your quilts, you got to take keep that half circle in mind. You're going to, you know, like, what can I put in this half circle? There's a lot of things you can put in that half circle. You can put straight line quilting in that half circle. And most people do it using like a quarter inch seam allowance and 
Let me show you this. I showed it to y'all once before when I was showing y'all some of the stuff I got. I even have a, a, a fluorescent light, one of these little small straight edge lights. But I got this to you put on my cutie frame over here. But I really grabbed this bag for us to show y'all. Come on now. And I be telling y'all all the time I use regular chalk too. It'll wash out. I keep seeing stuff. I'm coming here for something else. And okay, I have labels. You can use labels to mark your quilt too. Uh, I even used uh, a poppy here. This is what I'm looking for right here. I use a poppy on top of my ruler for doing straight edge, straight line quilting to make sure it's straight. This is what I want to show y'all. This is the tool you will need. You will definitely need a tool like this because it's a measurement uh, gauge. What it helps you to do is this edge right here that's sticking up is a quarter inch edge. Remember with the ruler foot on, when you saw them with your machine, your needle is always a quarter inch away from your line. So this will help you line it up. You can find these on Amazon and you can find these on Timu. I got mine from Timu and this is not a sponsored share. It is not a sponsor share. I'm telling y'all because we are fellow quilters and we love to sew. And if we can learn to do our own quilts, it'll save us a few dollars, okay? It have the 5 8 seam allowance. It depends on how far you want your stitches to be from your needle. You want to line it up using one of these. They have them that comes uh, in different different colors it comes some be acrylic temper plates made with this and you could probably get these off of timu and put them in something and just cover them with epoxy yourself so they are last and once you get them covered and solid you take you a uh jigsaw and just trim it down so you still have your same exact measurement I'm telling y'all because if that's what I needed to do, that's what I do and that's how I do it. Now, you might have a different way and a better way of doing it. But y'all remember the quilt rulers too. I got these from Timu. These comes in handy. I took a class that helps you to get certified with a certificate to be able to do this and so steady teaches the class different people have those so steady classes you pay a small fee and take the class you do uh get you a cup of fat quarters put one as the top layer one as the bottom layer and you do your work and you send them pictures you have to do your work but i got this bag up because i have a bunch of more shapes in here i have a bunch of more. It, this design is cut out as a template. Um, I could use that as a quilting design. I have um, more cardboard cutting. And the best box I have found to use to make these kind of templates is cereal boxes. I love using a cereal box. Um as you can see here, I have the small triangles here. And I'm sharing this with y'all because a lot of people probably toss these out. I don't toss these. I have two large, extremely large filing cabinets that I have to file my things in. But I haven't done so because... This year probably will be my truly last year in this house. A medium-sized block. And you see it's a pattern. You purchase these, they probably come out for Amazon. 
where you get these pattern this is a draw one now this is a nice triangle you could use for the star pattern i look at a certain quilt blocks as templates that i can use to design a uh, straight fabric quilts with i might be looking wrong but you can also do it like that if you say I want a German uh, gentleman bow tie quilt, take that same pattern, design it out on your straight fabric, and once you get through quilting, you will have that gentleman bow tie in the center of that block. If you want clamshell, take this pattern and use your water soluble markers. When you get ready, hi, guess who, Nancy? She said, hi, Miss Ellen. I'm sorry I'm running my mouth. I wasn't keeping up with the chat. But thank y'all, all of y'all for joining me today. And use these marking tools. I also have the diamond plate design. And this is the large one. I'm pretty sure I have some smaller ones down in this bag. That's a large diamond design. And I've been really wanting the, um, the long star quilt. I have a handbook with the pattern in it, how to make the long star. And I've been wanting to make that quilt. Just imagine if I decided to make it using white fabric and red thread. And my red thread will color in a portion of one of these blocks. So Terry said, that's Thanks for sharing, Miss Ellen. I didn't know how to use that clamshell ruler. I don't have one, but I have a better idea now. Thank you. You're welcome, so Terry. You are so welcome. And these clamshells, they're awesome. They're real easy to make. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to quilt with the clamshell, you're going to really need the ruler. I don't put it back over here, but let me get it. You're going to need the ruler. The reason for using the ruler. Let me see here. Let me go through this bag and show you something. I don't mind sharing where I get my stuff at. I'm not ashamed of being poor. I'm not ashamed of being who I am, okay? This is... um. The flower, floor, flower design. I showed y'all these before. It come off of Timu. I think I got all of these rulers with about four in the pack of each for maybe $30. And I think that was a great deal because I got like maybe four or five of them. I even have the Namander. I told y'all I got it at a quilt show and I did. But what I'm trying to find... This here is not the clam shell. I don't think I have the clam. Yes, it is. This is that clam shell. Y'all see that? Okay. I was looking for this to show y'all this. Let me get it out. The way you use these clam shells here, if you look real close, you're going to see these lines in it. See the markings and lines? Those lines you have to use to help you to line up your clamshells. And if I'm using the four inch, they come in different sizes. This is one and a half inch. This is four inches. This is two inches. And this is three inches. So you line it up. And I'm going to use this. You see it's way bigger. This uh, paper template plate is way bigger. But I'm going to tell you, on this paper template plate, it don't have lines in it for quilting. But what you can do, you take, you have to use this gauge for all of it. You want it to line up. I'm trying to show y'all. 
but you measure. If you're going to start from the bottom, you put this right here. Mm. Let me do it where y'all can see it. You line that up. And once you get that in there like that, it's bumped up against one another. You know that your needle going to like come on the line. The line like your box, you got uh, the grid box. You want that seam to come on that line. You have to bump that up and that tell you where to set it at. Once you know where to set it at, everything going to line up for you. So if you want to try this, get you two fat quarters now. Test yourself. Use yourself to be an example, you know, to test yourself and grow your skills. Even when you moving, um, when you draw it on the paper, when you draw your uh, clamshell on the paper, you still got to use this gauge to line it up. Now, I'm using the one-fourth inch theme side to line it up to test. So when you put the next one in, you got to go over. So this bump up to that side where that uh, ruler foot going to come through there. It. And once it come through, it going to touch the line you want it to be next to. That's how you line it up so it'll be perfect. It'll look perfect. You Somebody think you had it done on a long arm. Um, hope I didn't miss anything, but this is what I want to show y'all. So Terry said, thank you. Thank you. I understand. All right. Um, these are very cheap on Timu. They might be like a dollar, a dollar, maybe 19 cent or something like that. They very cheap. And if you got any coupons with Timu, they'll be cheaper than that dollar. Right now, I have a credit up on Timu, about 6 or $7. I said I was going to go back and get some of these. And when I do my first giveaway for this year coming up next month, y'all know March the 11th is my YouTube anniversary. I will be officially... 10 year anniversary sewing on YouTube and I'm going to do a giveaway. So if y'all haven't subscribed to my channel, you better go ahead and subscribe because you could be a winner. That's just only a few of the things I want to do. Um, I'm trying to prepare myself now. Oh, I need to put my ruler back in here. I'm moving so fast, y'all. Because I love to share. I really do. I don't want to lose anything while I'm sharing, though. Um, I have some more of those sewing gauges in here somewhere. And this is that, sh that shape, the different shapes like the triangle ruler set that I have that you can... Um, Quilt these uh, designs here with. And once you quilting these design like this is in here, you really need that sewing gauge. That sewing gauge to uh, get everything to line up with the rulers. And once it line up, I mean, that is beautiful. And see, a lot of people don't talk about the sewing gauge. A lot of people don't tell you when you ruler quilting, you need the sewing gauge to make it work for you. Um, that's the clamshell. I just had it. And I got some patterns in here, too. This is a huge butterfly. I plan on making. I even got this one. And this the design I'm thinking about putting on the um, the coats quilt. I'm thinking about doing the spirals here. And once I do the spirals, I was going to um, nest them with some straight lines to fill in an opening and stuff like that. This is a water-soluble marking pencil with the white chalk in it. Now, 
you don't have to just go get the pencils. You can get the Taylor's chalk, the blue, the white. I haven't seen any other colors. You can get the pen they have on Amazon chalk pen with the refillable uh, chalk go thing go in the pen. I just have these, you know, I have an extra water soluble and I have these um, pencils, the gray and the yellow. And all of it either irons out or washes out. Uh, let me see, did I miss anything? I know I'm missing. Um, <laughs> I have some more of them gauges and I don't know what I did. Okay, here they is. Uh, is it? Yeah. And two of these come in the pack, y'all. If y'all didn't know, two come in the pack and they have that little round hole in them. Can you see that little round hole? They have the little round hole where you can hook it on a um, lanyard and keep it around your neck so you don't lose it while you're quilting. And that's a very good thing to have. And they comes two in a pack. Okay, I have more. Um, mm. Be nice if I move some of this stuff out the way. I found this poppy here at the Dollar Tree. Now, they might have these poppy online, but they're, they come in very handy. Uh, I have a lot of different mm, paper patterns, temple plates, and I still don't have them all in one spot. I have this bag full. I have... Now, I don't know where you purchased this at, but I have some grid. This like a plastic flim with a design on it. See that design? And I think it's a cute design. I keep these because I have a projector. And if I want to enlarge this design, I know how to do it. I can go in and enlarge it. And I love to share that sometime with y'all too on how you do things, how you enlarge it. Because I don't want to have no regrets. I don't want to say, and I should have shared that with the world. I should have shared that so other people could learn how to do this. Look at that uh, design. That's beautiful. I like this. I can blow that up as well. And I have a butterfly design. I can even fix that to be a quilting design by blowing it up uh, and putting it on some paper and fill the whole block. Say if I want to do a 15-inch block, I can blow it up to where it'll be 15 inches, draw it out on some paper, Tape that paper over that block and stitch straight through that paper, just like we do foundation paper piecing. And once I'm done, rip it off. I got what I need. Once I get all the paper out, I can go back and highlight my threads if I want my threads to pop. There you go. A flower on grid. And I'm sharing with y'all today because I love to sew. I love quilting. And anybody that is interested, that love to sew and love quilting, can do the same. Um, I even have different, I have tons and tons of this stuff. I have squares. This sort of like the square you get in the fat quarters. You can save that and use it as a template. Especially when you're going to use your markers to mark it out. Now, this is templates on a grid that someone had purchased it and decided they didn't want it anymore. And I said, thank you. Thank you. And I purchased it. 
Matter of fact, I purchased this whole bag for maybe $5. The whole bag from the quilt show. And it have different types of templates in it. Here's more triangles, different shapes here. All of this is worth having when you have to quilt your own. Here's another design. Remember about the star grid? Create your star grid. It's kind of showing you right there on that design. But they got their colors on there on what they wanted, you know. Then they have the pieces in there in cardboard where you can just trace around the cardboard. This is a smaller diamond cut star where you can make um, sort of like the carpenter star. That's the pattern template to making one of those. And this one has a round bow. Ooh, I'm losing. Let me find it. Okay. This is a clear. I had dropped this. But this is a temple plate for a quilt pattern that was um, designed. And these are, oh, just a quilt pattern. And if you look close on this quilt pattern, it got the clamshells. It has... Um, the um dressing plate all kind of little designs up there and it's a fold out magazine sheet copy of the pattern design and i'm so good at printing stuff like this and doing stuff like that i just haven't did it because it seemed like i had been starting to get sick one sickness after the other but I feel a lot better today, thank God. This is another template I have. It's a very large hectagon. And it is huge. Three and a half inches corners on it. Here's another hectagon. Or something here. Now, some of these uh, templates and rulers and stuff comes where you can put a hole in the center. Now, if you have seen quilters using a hole in their ruler and stuff, they take a small little thumbtack and push it up through the center of their block where they're working it. And then when they rotate their template, y'all excuse me, I got more... Um, Notification blocking. Oh, hi, um, Denise Opatchet 33. Hello, hello. How you doing? So glad you could join me. I have been sewing very small hectic by hand when I watch TV. Now that's awesome. I started a small, very small hectic gun block quilt and I really ain't had the time to work on it anymore because I lost my sister and actually last year I lost a sister in April. This year I lost my sister in February and she was my last, the last sister living and now it's, I'm the only girl alive, and my brother is the only boy alive. So it's just the two of us, and I'm just going to focus on living life, loving and sharing and helping others to do, what I, to do what I can while I can while I'm still breathing. These are more little small squares on cardboard. You could take and use as templates. And I don't know how this phone 
This must be to my phones upstairs. And here's another star block. Can y'all see that? The purpose and then look at that. In the bag, right? All I need to do is file this stuff. And everybody remember what this go in? I'm thinking this is one of those rings you can put in the double wedding ring. The double wedding ring quilt. File it. I'm going to get the full pattern and put together and put it in there. But I have a lot more triangles and different stuff. A lot more. Another different kind of star block. How you can break it up. A lot of times I have learned that you can take something that you have drawn even your child your son your daughter or a neighbor's friend they draw it and if you know how to do foundation paper piecing you can use that same drawing or a copy of it and piece on top of that all you have to do is remember to add a quarter use your add a quarter ruler and once you trim it off It'll come right together. More blocks, more blocks. This is a sawtooth star, I think, block pattern here. And some kind of checkerboard star pattern here. But yes, you take these and you use your marking tools and your sewing gauge. They are the most important tools besides the sewing machine that'll keep you lined up to create a beautiful, beautiful quilt. I have more here, but I'm not going to pull all this out. I have all my little hectagon squares is everywhere. And I have tons and tons of more patterns and templates. Smaller uh, diamond triangle, right? Um, so Terry says, me too, just me and one brother left. He is the oldest. I am the youngest, 12 years between us. Oh, wow. My brother is older than me, and I think he might have like two, maybe three years on me. It's two or three. No, I'm thinking it's two years. I think he have two years on me. And then it was me and I had a younger sister. And my younger sister passed away at the age of 28. She had contracted a bacterial meningitis. And, oh, boy, threw me for a loop. People really don't know. When my sister passed, when you go through death, it's depressing. It's you just shut yourself off away from the world like you don't want to hear nothing. You don't want to say nothing. You don't want to do nothing. It's terrible. This uh, uh, fabric pattern I have in here with stars, stars, stars. I don't know if you can see it that far back, but it's got a star design on them. It got, oh, several of them. And I'm losing more my diamond. But you can take all of these and design your quilts with them. I even have circles. And let me, y'all seen me, right? Take this plate. Y'all remember I take an old plate and use it to do this quilt I just finished with the feathers and I use this as my template. Let me see. Denise Sopatcha 33 said, several years ago, I was sewing two inch hectares. Put them together in the car before work and doing lunch in my car. But now I don't know where they are. Oh, my goodness. Two inches. That's a beautiful quilt. You'll find it. I pray they turn up for you soon. 
Oh, Denise, you have to try to find it, my daughter. I know so, Terry. That sound beautiful. They so small. My heart goes out to you. Today would have been my brother's birthday. Oh, so Terry, it had been a happy birthday to your brother. I know, I know the feeling. I have lost all of my family members. My mother deceased, my father deceased. Now all of my sisters are deceased. All of my brothers but one are deceased. My mama had nine children. I have these different size circles here too. And as you can see, this come off of a spool of some sort, I'm thinking, but it's still a good circle to use because you can center this or you can just use it to put in a block. Say, I'm finna test something next year and put in a block, draw your design all the way around and come back and say, inside this part of the circle, you can say, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put wishbones in it. Okay. You go ahead and do your wishbones all the way around. And then you come back and say, now. I have this center hole. I'm going to put a few pebble stones in that center hole. And you go ahead and pebble them up. And then if you have another circle bigger than this one, you might say, okay, maybe I'll put a few feathers in this part of the circle. It's just different ways to design your quilt. I have notification popped up again, y'all. And I'm sharing today because I wanted y'all to see for y'all self that it, there is more ways to quilt your quilt and you can do it and use your domestic. And when I use my domestic, I don't use the quilting frame. I sew on it just like it is. Now you might need to take a folding table and put behind your area so you'll have enough tabletop to put your quilt on to sort of cut down on the drag. Um, I'm not going to pull all these stuff out. So using your rulers and using your templates to create a beautiful quilt design. It's pretty much easy to do. It's just how bad you want to do it. It can be done. Uh, I have plans, y'all. Plans, future plans. I'm hoping to get a long arm. And I've decided on the kind I want it. I want to get me one of those in notice. And believe me, I'm getting it computerized and everything. Ooh, excuse me, more notification. I can't see nobody comment on this one. Terry said, thank you for sharing. So, Terry, thank you for being here watching with me. Um, so Terry said, no, don't take them out. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and tie this back up and I'm going to put my marking tools away. And let me tell y'all, you see this orange quilt over here behind me? It's a smaller quilt. Now, if somebody already have experience in, experience in, ruler quilting and um template tracing and marking to quilt your quilt take a smaller quilt like that and go ahead and test it out and try it the quilt the brown quilt i did with the um burgundy brown and little green in it you can barely see me but you can see all the beige and brown I took my time and I did, I finished that quilt. 
I have the binding to put on it. And I'm waiting because I need to run out and pick up me some uh, burgundy for my binding. I'm going to use burgundy to pull out the red in the quilt. Um, I have some more. I have my poster stamp together. The scrappy poster stamp that I got it together to quilt. And I was thinking about sending it out to the long arm, but... Once you send it out to the long arm, you're constantly spending money, constantly spending money. And I'm not encouraging you not to send it out. You do what's best for you. I'm just sharing and helping you to see that if you determine enough, you can do it yourself as well. Um... And these are the tools, some of the tools that you will need. They are the main majority of the tools that I'm using that I'm going to need. You need your marking tools. You need your measurement gauge so you can measure where your needle, needle will land in the machine. Everybody's machine is different, but from that needle and that foot, it's the same one quarter of an inch, one fourth. It's the same distance. That's one thing they make all these machines to line up the same. Thank God for that. And I keep my marking tools in this little bowl. I keep my bobbins in. And I have water, but I was showing you this so you can take anything you have. Y'all see this? A plate. I've taken a plate and designed it a quilt with a plate. You can take a bucket. Matter of fact, I just found some of my rulers I laid to the side. I got through quilts and I need to put them away. You can take a round bucket. If you got a block big enough that will accommodate that bottom or the top of the round bucket, you go ahead and use your water soluble pen and draw that circle. Draw that circle and you use that circle and design that circle out. Just because you made a circle don't mean you have to quilt it in a circle. Have y'all heard of the quilting design called Matt Tabish? You can make tabish in that circle. And you can do it so fine and so good to where your thread can build up as you go around and pass on it. Sort of like you're doing pebble stones. That Matt Tabish looked pretty. It looked pretty good. And I see a lot of people use that kind of method when they making like the teardrop or the circle in a circle. Just another idea. Um, Denise Opechi33 said, I like the half flower template. Oh, yes. Now you can take the, um, the clamshell. Um, these rulers ain't going to stay in here. But you can take the clamshell temple plate. And um, it ain't just got to be the clamshell. You can take this right here. And once you start in here, have a line. See the mark in here? It's showing where your ruler bump, your um, machine foot will bump up against the needle. And your needle lines up here to start here. And once you go up here, that line in the center marks the center line. And you come on back down and stop at that line. That's, that's give you this hourglass or vase-like shape where I use this to make a vase-like shape. And I pebble. Actually, I think I did straight lines and pebbles in that vase to make it look like a real vase. 
and I kind of used some of my drawing skills into designing it into that uh, vase. Now, I don't know how good anyone can draw, but you can take this and draw that same design on a yard of fabric, which will make, um, what I'm trying to say, to make a panel. You make a panel. You use your water-soluble tools and draw this and make your vase. Once you got your, got your vase made, go ahead and draw your stems and stuff out and design flowers, different shapes of flowers into that vase. And once you go ahead and quilt that up, you can double stitch or triple stitch your flowers to make them pop out a little bit. And you've been a created something so pretty into a panel. And then you take that panel and piece some more pieces and go around it to make it a bigger quilt. I have done stuff like that before. I have designed a few patterns but I never made any of them. I just designed them. But now I see other people done did the same thing I did and they named it what they chose to name it. So now if I was to go back to do my own patterns, I have to make it, take pictures, get a patent on it, and then go to my print shop and let them print them up for me or have them to print them just on orders because I plan to get a link with my print shop where once I put the link, they will create the uh, link where I can sell T-shirts coffee mugs, whatever from the print shop. And when you order, you order direct from them. I won't even have to handle anything. You just order direct from them. And even my patterns will be on that list, but I will own the copyright to it. I'm just allowing them to print because they are my printer supply. Uh, they will be supplying my prints, patterns and stuff for my clients or my friends or my group or my channel. They will be supplying it all. Even the dancing lady patterns. Um, I will get that out because I have my quilt already made to that. I have my pattern already made to that. All I have to do is send in. Well, y'all know the routine. How you send in, you give them your instructions. You patent your instruction because that's how you do it. You patent your picture because that's your product that you made yourself. You can't patent anybody else's product. You have to patent your own product. That's how it works. I looked into it and I'm working on it. I'm working on a lot of stuff too, y'all, behind the scenes. Um I'm trying to put myself into a position to where when I move back home, I'll still be able to travel. And I know I've been talking about a bus and an RV, but my mind has downscaled on me, y'all. My mind has downscaled. I'm telling y'all the truth because I'm like, it's just me. I'm by myself. What am I doing here? I have two vans sitting out those. I can't drive but one at a time. So I'm like, okay, maybe if I could do a little quilt studio on a smaller scale where I can travel, I can attend quilt retreats and events and still have my setup to go with me. I'm like, okay. I'm just checking it out. I'm just looking and eyeballing stuff right now because I'm looking at the fact if I have a bus, if the engine stopped running, I got to either buy a new bus or buy a new engine. 
And I probably have to pay three or four thousand dollars to get it told. I'm looking at the fact that if I had a class A RV, same scenario. If it's on the highway, you got to get it towed off the highway. And wherever they drop you at, that's where you're going to be stuck at. You might have electric because you got a generator. You can keep everything charging going, but you just can't live off nobody out in the street. I'm looking a little bit more further. So if I compact that thought and compact my plans and compact my dreams, I might can consider a travel trailer. Hook it behind one of the vans, something I already have, and travel. Just travel. Now, if the motor in my van blow up, if I'm attached to the van, I can put a new motor in it or I can go get another van. <laughs> Same scenario. Uh, hi, Gloria Armstrong. Strong. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to see you in chat. I've always wanted to learn how to quilt. Maybe I can learn a few things from you. You are more than welcome to learn what, what I can share to you, uh, Gloria. If you need to reach out to me, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on, well, we are already on YouTube, okay? I'm on uh, Twitter, where everybody know it as X now. And... On Twitter, I'm under uh, Ellen Get You Slim now. Uh, Denise says, thank you for showing all of your treasures with us and the helpful tips. You are so welcome, Denise. So Terry said, yep, you will work it out. Yes, yes, yes. I'm planning to work it out. Live and nothing happened. I want to accomplish something good before I die. You know what I mean? I have always did good things, I'm thinking. I hope I have. <laughs> I made a few mistakes along the way that I had to repent for. I'm going to tell y'all. I do repent. I do repent. Sometimes I say stuff that I don't mean to hurt nobody by saying I repent for that too because I actually hurt somebody. And I just try to think twice from now because when you when you repent for something, you don't want to go back and make the same mistake over. That's my take on that. Um, I'm in the process of... Y'all might want to close your eyes a minute. Let me show y'all this. I'm in the process of hooking this up. I just went and got myself a big fat. Can y'all see that? Okay. Let me close your eyes again. I'm moving it again. Okay. I'm back. I got me an Apple computer. And the reason I got this is because... I like traveling with my daughter. She do festivals and set up and stuff. And this big computer here, I can take it with me. We have our own internet we take with us to hook to it and have internet on the go. And she can add her registers to this. And I can take my printer and when she doing register, if we need to print a receipt, we can print receipts on the spot. And if we had a travel trailer for this setup, I think it'll be great. Even a pop-up. I told her if we had a pop-up uh, travel trailer, you can cut out, take out all the uh, mesh or fabric they have in it and replace that with wood. And on the wood, you put your shelves on the wall. They just rent you a small spot anyway at festivals and stuff. So that's what that's all about. It's just a lot of work going to traveling and festivals and e different events because 
I've been to quite a few of them. Even quilt shows is good to take what you have, you know. Hi, Emily. So good to see you in chat. So Terry says, sounds good. And yes, computer monitor. That's a computer. It's a built-in, computer built-in with the monitor. It's one piece all together. And um, Emily says, hi, Ellen. I'm late to the party. Hope you are keeping well. Lovely to see you. It is lovely to see you too. So Terry said, it's an all-in-one. Love it. Yes, it's an all-in-one. That's why I just, when I saw it was a Macintosh apple, I just got it. I asked a few questions and they said it's an all-in-one. And it's kind of heavy. Got a little weight, but I can pick it up and handle it. Keyboard, mouse, built-in speakers. I mean, it gonna work perfect for taking some more quilting classes. Um, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm waiting to put my, y'all remember back here, I told y'all I had the Hinton Bird long quilting frame. I'm waiting to put that up. I'm not sure I really want to put that up, put it up and use it because when I get a new, when I get the new quilting machine, I want to innovate it and I want it on a metal frame. And I also want to get it uh, automated, automated. So, that frame and that setup, I want automated, but this Hintonbird frame, I can put my Juki on that frame, but I'm not going to put my Juki on it. I'm going to actually put my Juki on the cutie frame. And the Hintonbird frame will probably have another machine on it. I've been thinking about getting also a Cunique. I've been thinking about the Cunique 19 or the Cunique uh, 22. If I put it on, if I go that route and do that, I want that one to be a manual. I want it to be a manual machine because when you start off teaching somebody to quilt or long arm on a frame, you want to be able to teach them how to do it manually because automation can take care of itself once you set up your design, what you want on your project, it'll take care of itself. You just have to go back and restart, reset. It'll still stitch out what you need to stitch out. But the manual, the manual one, you do it all by hand yourself. You quilt it with the machine, you know, by doing the manual. And the juke go on the cuter frame. Excuse me. But you can also teach others how to use their cuter frame by designing a grid that is coming to five inch squares because this juki machines only have about a nine inch throat space in it which when it's on the cutie frame it only give you about five inches of throat space so once you learn to create your grid into five inch blocks then you can quilt a large quilt on that cutie frame but you do it in a style using the edge to edge method you start on your right side edge and then as you go you adjust it by sliding it over slide it down put your clamps on and cutie also has the metal arm bars if y'all know anything about the magnetic bars you can get to put on there 
those might be better for the cuticle frame because it'll allow you to move your quilt without the struggle of trying to take off the clamps. I find it kind of irritates me sometimes when I'm trying to take off them clamps and I have arthritis and it's just not a good topic for me to try to pull them off. Um, and you can get some of those bars off of Amazon as well, the magnetic bars. Um, I'm just working on a few things, y'all, while I'm up feeling okay, trying to get things in order. I have tons and tons of fabric that I got to get straightened out. So if I decide to get a travel trailer, I want it, I want to use one, not a new one. And I need it to have an honey on it. So if I'm traveling like for the spring and the summer and I meet different people, new people, if I'm at a, um, what they call a camper park or something like that, I can teach somebody how to quilt and sew. And I do all of my teachings for free. I don't charge not one cent. And my reason for that is because I would love for anyone that want to learn how to sew and quilt to learn. I want them to be able to do what they have, they want to do, their heart's desire. God want us to have our heart desires. I want other people to have their heart desires too. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. And I've been stacking my quilts up at the as I get them finished and done, complete, just stack them up. And whenever I do go out and whenever I do decide to get this travel trail and go to moving around, I'll be able to show my stuff, show my work. I have a lot of stuff I already accumulated, like outside carpet rug and I don't have the green stuff. I got the pretty gray design outdoors carpet rug. Um, I got that. I got two pieces cut into, they come 12 by 10. So it's 12 foot by the whole roll. And then I got to cut 10 foot wide because your pop-up tents is only about 10 foot wide. And... They have some you can get 20 foot wide and, you know, you just go with what you got to make your area or your space look pretty decent. Um, they also have quilt shows where different people that make different stuff. You can rent a booth to be at quilt shows to sell all of your home sewn product if they allow that there. Uh, right down to it. The female sanitary napkins. I've been showing y'all how I made them. I have part of a pattern here. I done lost the other piece where I, you can make these. This like a teenager size here. You make an overnight size and a dot, larger dots, oversized. It's just different sizes. I make the hats. I crochet. Um... I knit. I well, I knit with a knitting machine. Let me clear that up. <laughs> um, hi, Ellen. Okay, I read that, Emily. And I like sharing what I learned how to do. I like sharing. I even um, turned a cup or two. Remember when I shared with y'all how I made my own cup, my tumbler cup. Um, yeah, most of the time I take my cups out and I spray paint them. And once I get them spray painted and they dry, I bring them in. If I have any stickers, you can take stickers and add to your cup. And once you mix your, uh, epoxy mix, just rub right on over there with it rotating. Go little, little by little. I take one finger with gloves on and I dip it in and just rub 
that one all over it. Once you think you got enough on there, got it colored the way you want it, you keep letting it rotate and rotate. That way it won't just drip straight off. You don't put a whole lot on it. Let it dry. Once it dry, you can go in and sand down in it, bumps and humps in it, and go back and rub another coat on. Smooth it out. But you rub when you sand it. You got to make sure you wash that off so won't no white creases be on there from sanding it. And then you go back and run your second layer of epoxy. The Confident Quilter. Hi, Gladys Paul. How you doing? Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Betty Harris. She said, hi, Miss Ellen. How you doing? I've been missing seeing you. I know we used to have some good praying time. Good praying time. I um I call in to another channel now where uh, they be, everybody be praying on that uh channel because the lady I was praying with intercession prayer with. She's no longer doing the conference call. But I do thank God for her. I thank God for you too. I thank God for all my friends. Y'all my family too because I include y'all in what I do. I make time for y'all. Y'all is part of my world. And everything and everyone you allow to be a part of your world, you have included them. Even when things go wrong, you have included them into your world and your space, especially when you are public eye or into the public figure. So I love each and every one of y'all. I really do. Um, let me see, have I missed anything? Anything else I can share with y'all? Okay, I got that. Get that hook up. I've been working. I've been doing some crochet. I told y'all that. I've been making the bucket ruffle hats. I posted a picture <laughs> with the hat on. I made one in different colors with the orange and stuff. And I got so many compliments about that hat. But my daughter said, Mama, that hat looked like a rainbow hat. And I said, well, it might do look like a rainbow, but I like the colors. It's orange, it's blue, it's green. It had all the colors I was liking, see together, yellow and stuff like that. I said, but I'm not calling it a rainbow hat. I'm calling it a bucket, a ruffled bucket hat. <laughs> I'm going to be working on making some of those. My daughter will be coming from Mississippi to join me soon. And whatever I got made, I'm just going to pack it up and let her have it. Take it with you. That way, when I get ready to pack up, that's less stuff I got to carry. Um, let me see. Anything else? I have my tools. Y'all know it might be a good idea, too, to get y'all a pencil. This is one of those fat uh, preschool pencils. And I find that I like these better when I have to mark some fabric. And you know eventually this will wash out, too. You just use some protein stain remover on it, and it'll come out. I used to purchase uh, a jug of the Arrow. Y'all remember the detergent called A-R-A-E-A -E -A or A-R-A-E-A -A or something like that. It come in a red jug. And I used to put a little in the top and take it and rub it on the stain and rub it in. It'll lift them stains right on out your fabric. I also tell others, you know, when I go to laundry mats to do laundry and stuff people come in asking questions don't know what to do and they like 
I have my load of white clothes here and I want to wash them where they'll come bright white. What can I use? What can I use? I said, well, first you have to know one of the bleaches is a cleaning bleach that you use to clean your house with. You can put a little in your dishes to sanitize your dishes and, you know, wipe down your walls or whatever you're going to do is just sanitizes and clean. Now, the bleach you want to use to whiten your clothes or your fabric is Clorox bleach. You don't want to use nothing but a Clorox bleach because Clorox bleach will brighten your white. And as you can see, I didn't use Clorox bleach on this one. It's got a little dinge to it. No Clorox. But when you when I want it white, I know to wash it with Clorox bleach. I put all my whites together and put them in the washing machine and add my Tide Pods. And then I take my Clorox bleach. I get a um, pitcher and I will put so much bleach in there and I will add water to that bleach. And I add warm water or hot water. That way I know it'll be activated when I pour it in. Hope that helps somebody. And I also like using homemade starch. And I share this with people sometimes. I get that Argo starch, come in the box. I get me a small pot and I fill it with water and put it on the stove. Let the water come to a boil. While the water's getting ready to come to a boil, I get me a bowl and I measure out so many cups of the Argo starch. And then I take a little water and I mix it in there with the Argo starch. And I stir it like I'm going to make bread or something to come to a paste. The reason I do it like that, I don't want no clunks in my starch. And when it comes to a paste, I can add that paste to my boiling water and it's not going to clunk up or make a stew or something out of it and pour that paste in there and keep stirring it a little bit. Keep stirring it. It's going to slowly thin it out where it becomes a thick sprayable starch. You can add water, but you can't take none away. <laughs> and once I get it to the thickness, I want that I know it'll go through the spray bottle. Now, if you add some vodka, I'm thinking it's potato vodka. You might can try regular vodka too. But you add vodka to the starch, that'll keep it. It's supposed to keep it from spoiling on you if you leave it out overnight. But I always try to put my starch in the refrigerator to keep it cool so it don't have that spoil or sour smell. And I also have a habit, y'all. I have a habit of adding a liquid fragrance in my starch. And I go to Walmart and I get those spray body scents that you can spray. And if it smells real good, I add it to my starch and I'll shake it up real good in there. And then when I smell my starch, it smells good. But I use it on my fabric. I'm telling y'all, I use it. But when I get through making my quilt right down to putting a binding on that quilt, I take that quilt to the laundromat and put it in a large washer because don't a lot of people use the large ones. They don't want to pay that kind of money. I put it in a large washer and go ahead and wash that quilt. I get that fragrance out of it and whatever markings in it come out and just laundry it, wash it, wash it, put it in the dryer and dry it. I don't hard dry it, but I dry it enough so I can lift it and move it around. And I fold it up, bring it home. And when I bring it home, I just hang it on one of my doors and let it air dry, finish air drying. That's how I do it. 
and I don't smoke. I don't chew tobacco. I don't dip snuff. I have some missing tooth. I know I had to get that pain out my mouth, but hopefully soon, maybe this spring or this summer, I can go in and get my bridges done. Get my bridges for my mouth. Um, I did get a temporary veneer to go in, but I do not like that thing. That's money I threw out the window, okay? <laughs> oh, boy. I probably could go on and on and on talking, talking, sharing things I do to make quilting happy for me. Um, all my life as a grown adult, I used to make quilts and I used to sell them or give them away or pass them on. But now I'm at a stage to where I'm ready. Oh, excuse me. I'm ready to, uh, go ahead and get everything situated where i can sell my quilts maybe a few i'm not gonna say a lot i'm ready to go on and prepare get myself side up to um grow my nonprofit llc and I think it's time because I like helping people. It's I've been going through the emotion. It's certain things are coming that we're not quite prepared for. One of them, I don't really like talking about a lot of stuff because somebody might say, oh, she a Debbie Downer. Not trying to be. I like warning my people. Like God, how he warns us. I like warning my friends, my loved ones, people I care about, and those that I don't know. I like warning them too, because it's either you're going to hear and listen or go back and walk away. You go Either way, you're going to do you. You're going to keep doing you. Um, the situation with New York City, about the truckers going on strike. Okay, if they're doing a strike, if you haven't thought about this, this means if no trucks going in or no not none coming out, that means factories going to be closing. You can't get out because the semi trucks won't do it. But there's another way you can do it by using like cargo vans. Like I want to order this and I have a van in the next city or next state to pick it up and bring it on in here. To get what you need there's a way to get around this uh boycott but what i've been looking at if it happened to new york city what gonna stop them from making it happen to the next city what gonna stop them from spraying spreading a epidemic active behavior across the whole nation what so if god can put us in place now to warn the peoples if god put us in place to say something you can't just sit on it you got to do what god wants you to do that's the purpose for us being here that's the purpose of living on this planet going through what you go through and who say they want to repeat their same life? Who? I know I love my family. I love my friends, but I ain't going to say I want to repeat everything I done went through. I ain't going to say that. Because as we are now, you have to take the good with the bad. Okay. I'm not going to keep going, <laughs> but I'm going to go and let y'all go. I thank y'all for coming on and joining me. 
If y'all have any questions, I left my email in the description of this video. Uh, if y'all would like to do some sew alongs or just whatever it may be, I might have videos already up on a lot of stuff, but you're more than welcome to go back, look through the videos, learn how to put things together, learn how to do certain stuff because I make my little one inch poster stamp quilts using one and a half inch strips. And I cross cut them, but it's a way you do it. Sometimes you have to sew that seam twice. Sometimes you can sew it just once. And when you sew it just that once and you're using that starch, I'm telling you how I make Argo starch, you press all those seams open using that starch, Everything just going to lay flat. Nothing's going to move. Your thread is not going to ravel anything because it's sort of like it's stuck in place. Once you get the full quilt top together, get the quilt quilted, then take it to the laundromat or your laundry washer or whatever. Wash your quilt to get that extra hard starch and stuff out of the quilt. I don't like leaving any residue or anything in them. So, I'm going to go and let y'all go because I sit here and run my mouth all day and I look up, it'll be dark and I'm still sitting here talking. <laughs> and if y'all like Walmart flat fabrics, keep a lookout on y'all Walmart. They've been doing sales on fabric. I found about eight, nine bunch of boats of fabric, like a dollar a yard. Instead of me just getting a few yards, I got the whole boat. So thank y'all for coming in. Thank y'all for watching. I got a notification that popped up in my way too. Uh, so Terry said, thank you, Miss Ellen. Have a wonderful day. Y'all have a wonderful day too and stay blessed. I love each and every one of y'all. You can't do anything about it. My love is pure and real. Stay blessed. Bye now. Bye.